controlled. That's going to make the difference. That's coming on the back straightaway now. We'll accelerate to about 130 miles an hour, and the Cadillac Alante is just a minute now. All right, Bobby, we'll let you pay attention to your very important job of bringing the field down. One car in trouble. The 36 car, unbelievable. Roberto Guerrero, the pole sitter, in trouble. No indication why this could have happened at all. We're only on the second parade lap, not even to the pace lap, and Roberto Guerrero spins the car. Talk about his bad luck here, Sam Posey. It's struck again. He has been on an emotional roller coaster throughout the month of May. Of course, he has not driven in cars, in racing cars, for almost a full year since he raced here. That's his wife, Katie, there. Of course, a look of disbelief. What could you be thinking at this point? They weren't even up to medium speed. It had to have been some incredible mechanical problem. You're looking at the team there of Kenny Bernstein. We're going to see him on the... Uh, middle of the screen there absolutely inexplicable the only thing that one might consider bobby indicated to us bobby unser how cold it is and because of that look the car is damaged yeah no question he's out of the race the tires may not have come up to full temperature and maybe with that high torque engine when he shifted gears just suddenly boy it uh oh what a terrible situation for roberto guerrero one of the nicest men we thought that racing. he was making a true comeback of course he was one of the uh fastest and best drivers uh in indycar racing in the mid 70s he suffered a concussion uh, at this track in 1987 in a testing accident he was in a coma for 17 days and after that and we're looking back now from the pace car look on to the look at the right there roberto wow he appears to have just turned suddenly, doesn't he, Paul? He I sure think does. car owners... Back the idiot's running to the Indy 500. Buddy was there, screams down toward turn one. Jones doesn't seem like he can make a move on him. On to the back stretch. That's Jones, still coming still, here. Jones still looking for a chance to move. He's trying to get around Jordan. He's around him now, in contact with the leader. The third turn, one to go in Indianapolis. Buddy Lazier taking a look at the fourth turn, comes off the fourth corner. And the checkered flag lies just ahead as Buddy Lazier takes the checkered flag and wins the Indianapolis 500. Firestone's first win since 1971. And, and a crash on the finish. Big crash on the finish of the race. Salazar, looks like Sam Pedri, and Guerrero. The cars that were running fourth, fifth, and sixth all crashed together at the end of the race. And Salazar looking down at his feet to make sure they're okay. So a battle that was developing really for fourth place there's the two participants in the uh, in the battle that aborted itself just before the finish has buddy lazier what an incredibly great victory he takes his win at the indianapolis 500 mile race here are the unofficial results as buddy lazier has taken the win and, and it's the one that counts the indianapolis 500 but as he was crossing the finish line taking the checkered roberto guerrero lost control spins there and he gets up into the look at sam Pedri. whoa i've never seen that red card get up like that into the fence he's upside down still right there now he hits salazar he's still upside down and it flips him back over unbelievable unbelievable accident right there another look at it here comes guerrero oh, he, just, he loses it he just loses it whoa, whoa up so high over the top of the camera and those two guys will look at that the force and that just took those unbelievable actions well, that hit on the fence by zampedre flipping upside down was unbelievable this is from salazar's car roberto loses it down to the left comes across Look at that. Salazar literally goes under it. 
Look him duck. Did you see Unbelievable. Him duck? He ducked his head. Drives under it and then is hit from behind, but that hit puts him right side up. Let's go to Gary Jr. Jr. has come forward in the white car, and Robbie Gordon is struggling to come forward as well. Mark Martin is still the leader. Tommy Kendall went into turn one a little while ago, Paul, a little bit low, lost a little bit of momentum. Earnhardt went, Earnhardt went right by him, little Al went right by him. He went back to second to last place almost immediately. Earnhardt and Marlin come to work up on Terry Labonte now. He comes down inside oh, Labonte, and we've got trouble. trouble. And Earnhardt's in it big time. Oh, we've got several, several cars. There's Sterling Marlin, dark blue car. So over in turn four, several cars involved in contact, a couple including Earnhardt, and uh, there you see Robbie Gordon as he tries to limp back to the pits. There's Kinzer, you saw a brief shot of him. Heavy damage to the right front. Earnhardt says, now this one is over, I'm taking it to the garage. It's amazing that he can even drive that thing to the garage. Look how bad it's been. You can see the camera on board there with Earnhardt as he takes it all the way back to the IROC garage area. Terry Labonte, some damage to the right front of his car. So, uh, and there you take a look at the four car, Sterling Marlin, as he sits up against the wall. Robbie Gordon, had a lot of smoke coming out of the cockpit of that car, but it doesn't seem to perturb him. He hasn't climbed out yet. Well, he's still hoping that he can get it back together. When you see this many cars wrecked, the guy wants to stay in the race no matter what, because that's the point deal. So five cars involved in this situation, seven circling the track very slowly. Here's what got it started, Benny. Looks like some contact between Jeff Gordon and Kinzer. And there comes Earnhardt right in the side of Kinzer. There's Sterling Marlin running right into Kinzer. Kinzer really got a lot of hits right there, but I think, Benny, if I caught the, the uh, film just right, it looked to me like Kinzer lost it, got it spun out there. So five cars heavily damaged. There's Steve Kinzer's car. The initial reporter, all that the drivers climbed out of their cars and they're okay. We'll update that should there be any change. Sadler is really pushing Kenny into the corner, trying to get Kenny into the corner a little too hot so Kenny slides up so he can slip underneath him. Benson fading badly here at the end of the race, sliding back through the field. He is on his bumper. Let's see. Oh, they... Yes, he touches him a little bit there almost. <laughs> Now he gets a run on him. He's on he the got, inside. He'll have it. Can uh, Larry Pearson go with him? What's going to happen here? Back comes and he is, oh, oh, they all wreck. The all and Dale top Jarrett three comes and Dale Jarrett oh, is no. going to come home. The top three are in the wall. Dale Jarrett coming to the line. This is going to bring out the caution. Kenny Wallace in the wall. Hermie Sadler is there. Larry Pearson. And the winner to the strike is Jarrett. He gets the white and the yellow flag. And that race is over. Wow. All he needs to just come back and get the checker. But and Vita was going to come home in second spot. Boy, what a way for Fidoa to leave this team after he won for them at Nazareth. He comes back for Ray and Diane DeWitt. And in this dramatic moment, right at the finish, top three in the wall. Sadler made the move on the inside. we got to see that again. And there you see the catastrophe that lies on the outside of turn three. Well, those three race cars are torn up. Jarrett has won it as the three leaders crash going down at 175 miles an hour into the third turn. Here's Sadler getting out. Kenny Wallace still in his car. He's out. There he comes out. Oh boy, that It was a championship car one moment, it is junk the next. Yeah, those fans hit pretty bad. hard. They're gonna sit down and think about this and stay away from each other for a little bit. That's probably the best thing they can do. 